Well, it's fair to say that we are starting to see an impact on Brexit on the economy. Yes, Steve was absolutely right that economic growth in the UK is positive, and, that's, uh, and that does stand out against um, some of the um, weak numbers that we're seeing in Europe. But we can't escape the fact that growth in the UK is very weak. And the key story here is one of business investment. Business investment is declining by around 4% year on year in the UK, and that is having a significant drag uh, on the economy overall. Um, looking ahead, you know, OK, we've got votes today in Parliament, we've got votes tomorrow. Um, it's all pointing to some form of extension to Article 50 and a delay to the process. And as an economist, my big concern is that a delay just means further uncertainty, and that's not going to help the economy in the short term. So, so as an economist, we oftentimes talk about capital spending and investment and expenditures in the context of sentiment. You mentioned this idea that we are kind of dragging things on a bit. Is that weighing on sentiment, and is that having the most impact on what's happening with the economic projections for the U.K. going forward? Well, the, the, the sentiment aspect is clearly something that, uh, that, that, that is being hit here. And it's not just business investment. It's consumer, consumer confidence as well. You know, there's households up and down the United Kingdom 16 days away uh, from the supposed Brexit uh, date uh, with no idea what the future relationship uh, is, is going to look like. Now, the impact is being seen more in the, uh, in the capital investment side. As I said, the business investment is, is, has, uh, is shrinking by around 4% year on year as of the uh, latest print. But there's clearly some, uh, um, some tentative signs that, uh, that, that, that this uh, lack um, of poor sentiment is, is actually flowing over into household spending decisions as well. And, uh, you know, just to reiterate the point, the longer this continues, um, it's, it's very hard to be, become op optimistic on, on the uh, growth outlook in the near term. We do know that the, the place where this is playing out front and center in the marketplace is in sterling versus the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. So as we take a look at how mm -hmm. sterling reacts, we've been pretty range bound now for months. What exactly is the balance for risk reward here with sterling? We're kind of in this middle ground. Are we expecting more downside because of the prolonged nature of the Brexit negotiations? My sense is what we're seeing with the current pricing of sterling is a market that just doesn't know what, what, which direction we're heading. Um, in, in our view, if the UK uh, can agree to a deal with the, with the European Union and we move on to a transition agreement, we would expect to see sterling strengthen somewhere to around 140 against the US dollar in 12 months. If a deal doesn't come through and the UK were to exit with no deal, um, we could easily see uh, cable below, uh, below 120. So, you know, what we're seeing today, this kind of 130 range-bound uh, uh, range level is really the market just, just telling us that, you know, the, the, the risks of, of either outcome seem, seem, seem pretty, pretty even uh, right now.